Okay, exciting to be here. Uh, so to get, uh, together with Gillian today, uh, we are going to talk about uh, DEI, which is a topic that we are both very passionate about. Uh, and our goal for this session is that uh, every one of you in the audience can take something very concrete, very practical with you uh, to start building more inclusive organizations. Uh, but Gillian, let's start with your journey with Booking.com. Uh, so uh, you spent about 20 years with yeah. Booking, Booking.com. Uh, you were the COO, CEO, and eventually also the chairwoman yes. uh, of the board. Um, and you led the company's uh, expansion from a startup to the uh, global travel giant it is today. So can you start by telling more about your journey with uh, Booking.com? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's been uh, almost 20 years of my life and it's super interesting uh, to being part of able to scale a company from a very small startup like lots of people out here to a world leader in travel. And um, it's nice if you can go through all these phases of growing a company, right? In the beginning where you're really trying to find product market fit, mm -hmm. where you're setting up all the departments you need to be successful, you're, you're thinking about your culture and uh, into really start scaling everything you do all over the world and I think once you've scaled, you come into a new phase again where you can start thinking about real new innovations because there's still so many challenges that people experience while traveling and there's mm -hmm. still so many problems that you can really solve, right, to make it a better experience. And uh, yeah, it's been an enormous journey. And the nice thing is if you've done that, that... Uh, yeah, now I've been looking at booking for 20 years, which you cannot really think about anything else. Mm -hmm. It's quite intense uh, to do that. And uh, after that, so it's about two years ago, I started really, the world has opened up because you can look at so many other companies. I've been investing in many companies. And the other topic that I've been working a lot on is DEI, which we will speak about today. But it's nice if you're now also able to use your knowledge in, in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us uh, when did you realize that DEI was important and also why is DEI important for you? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at my own journey, mm -hmm. In the beginning, I never realized that, or I never realized that as a woman in what I was doing, that I was kind of an exception. Mm. Uh, and there was actually two moments when I started realizing, okay, uh, within booking, this is something that really needs attention. The first moment was when I got my, was pregnant of my first child, because that's when you feel you're a woman, right? Because you feel kind of the elephant in the room and everybody was looking at me like, oh, what's going to happen now? Is she still going to be so dedicated, work hard, etc.? Uh, which was all fine, but you do feel a bit different at that time. And the second part was, um, I think it was when I was COO at Booking, um, I did a presentation and then somebody came up to me and she said, yeah, it's so nice to have you at the top, but we don't see any role models in between. So it's very hard for me to see the route to eventually ending up in a job like you're doing. And that's when I started realizing, yeah, this needs work because to, to get that right, mm -hmm. you need to really work on every level in a company uh, to get even DEI on the top, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. And what would you say, for example, now uh, you, uh, for example, have invested in several companies and are working with several companies what do you tell them when they ask you, like, why is DEI important? Why, why, does, it, why does it matter? Yeah, and that's also the, a good title of the session, right? I, I don't think we need to talk anymore mm. about why it's important. I think everybody knows mm. that you get better cultures in companies, you get more creativity, better innovation. Uh, it's proven that companies have better results. So I think that the business case for DEI is, is quite clear. 
And that's also why, when I had more time, started thinking about why is this now moving forward so slowly, right? Mm -hmm. Well, everybody knows it's important. Yeah. And um, yeah, you see through a lot of research we've done as well that most companies really see themselves as beginner. Uh, and companies want to be inclusive, right? That's not the problem, I think, but they often also don't know how. Mm. So there's still a lot of work to do to think through how do you then do that? And I've learned that at Booking as well, that I always say it's hard work. <laughs> it's, it's really hard work. And at Booking, we really started looking at the whole funnel mm. to think through, okay, where is it now breaking? And, and what can we do as a company to really improve every step from recruitment to when people get promoted to how we develop uh, talent until you have the leadership team, right? So every step requires so many actions. And I've also learned at Booking that this is a topic you cannot address Top down. Mm. Specifically when you have, like you have 800 people, I think, then it becomes mm, yep. really difficult. So you need to do a bottom up. And when you do a bottom up, you need data. So I realized, yeah, if you don't have data, and I was so surprised because tech companies, and I know within booking as well, you don't make any decision without data. And then if you look on the people part, there's yeah. hardly any data, right? And I think with DEI, this could really help mm -hmm. companies to see, are we making progress, but also what we're doing, does that actually have the impact that we need? So that I've learned another big part is, um, if you think about building a culture where everybody feel they belong, you can do engagement service, which are very important, but that in itself is not enough. You need to really listen to employees. So we started doing courageous conversations where people open up roundtable sessions, so smaller sessions. And I've learned a lot through the sessions that I didn't realize either, right? And um, diverse leaders in tech did a whole research as well, where you see this. If you, if you, if you ask leaders, two thirds of them think that there's no problem uh, of building an inclusive uh, culture. But actually, one third of the employees and the talent actually, actually thinks that. So there's a, a big perception gap. Mm. And that's something, when I saw that, I thought, yeah, that I've seen a booking as well, that you really need to step in and stimulate to have these conversations. Absolutely. Uh, and there's a lot of already practical stuff that I want to dig deeper into, but let's start with uh, data. Yes. Um, so uh, I definitely uh, kind of uh, do recognize that kind of um, uh, behavior in, in companies, that companies that are generally very data driven, but yes. when it comes to DEI, then they don't know what to do with yes. data. Uh, so, can you uh, can you uh, shed light to what can you or what should you be measuring uh, when you want to improve the uh, DEI in your organization? Yes. So. Uh I, the first thing I started doing when I have more time is uh, I, we've done two benchmarks mm -hmm. to really, because I thought if I uh, put benchmarks out, you can really help companies as to what should you measure. Yeah. Uh, which uh, <laughs> was good to do, but you do see that companies are not ready because they just don't have the data. So now we're actually seeing, okay, we need to do it one step ahead and to really see it's a maturity level, where do companies sit and how can they make the next step mm. to make these improvements. But companies really can start looking at data, right? There's a lot you can measure and there's a lot you can see, right? In recruitment, uh, there's a lot you can see in promotions, you know, that's what we've done at Booking as well. So the data that you can put in place, you should put in place yeah. in your engagement survey, make sure you ask questions around DEI, right? So, and these type of, it's qualitative and quantitative data that you should slowly start to gather. There's companies out there now that do uh, self-assessments, right? So that can help because then actually your employees can give you the information because sometimes you're not able to ask the information. So there's actually already lots of things that, uh, that companies can do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and maybe also to share one very uh, practical example uh, what I think uh, many companies can do uh, is implement uh, the question as part of the pool service that you yes. are already 
already doing uh, in your company, uh, even if it's uh, uh, something you built yourself, like yeah. a very <laughs> startup Google Forms type of pull survey, or if you're using a, a pull survey tool uh, nowadays, there are very good questions. Yeah, uh, and to, I think yeah. But I've also there's two elements which are mm. also super crucial role models. Mm, absolutely. So, and if you're a very small company, that's sometimes more difficult. But role models are super crucial. Mm, yeah. I think as a company to make sure that these role models are visible, uh, that you give them a stage as well, right? Mm. So uh, and mentorship sessions is something that you can implement. So there's lots mm. of things that companies can already do. Yeah. Absolutely, and maybe let's talk about that next. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, recruiting, yeah. uh, which I think also for many uh, start startups here in the audience is a very uh, hot topic. Uh, how do you bring that top talent? Um, but if if you are a, a startup or a bit larger larger scale up already, and you want to bring in more diverse talent, and you want to bring in more diverse talent to leadership positions as well, what, what are some um, tactics or kind of practical things that you can do to bring in more, more diverse talent? Yeah. Yeah, so it starts with making sure there's no biases, right, mm -hmm. in, in, in how you recruit uh, information about the company, etc. So that, I think, is step number one uh, in the job profile that you're putting out. So, But these are things that there, there's tools to do that very mm -hmm. well uh, today. Yep. Um, then I think it's very important to really stimulate to get a diverse pool of candidates to choose from. Uh, and that often takes more time. And I see that as well with companies I invest in, that at the moment they need an urgent hire, that's the moment they start thinking about it and then think, oh, it's not that they don't want to hire diverse candidates, but then there's a time element, they get pressure on making sure they make progress. and. And then it's just very difficult to accomplish that. So I think building a diverse talent pipeline, so to speak, is something you should be working on all year. And once you have connections with these communities, uh, with these talent mm -hmm. pools, actually at time you need, it's easier to find them. They are out there, but you mm -hmm. just need to do a bit more effort. So I think mm -hmm. that is something that, that really helps. Absolutely. For instance. And then I've learned many things at Booking as well. Mm -hmm. Once actually candidates come to interview, I've learned as well, if they come on a floor, if you think about all the in technology, for instance, they see only men, then for instance, that's also a problem. Right? So you do need to think a little bit on how you deal, or people that are interviewing should be diverse, mm -hmm. right? Because also yep. then you get a diverse perspective of if the candidate candidate is, is, is suitable or not. So there's, there's so many little things, I always say, but if you put your effort to it, uh, it's something that can be accomplished. Absolutely. So sourcing, uh, like yeah. taking the time to source more candidates, not just relying on your Correct. personal f network or friends. Uh, and really think about like how do you structure uh, the interview process. So, for example, uh, making sure that uh, people from a bit more diverse backgrounds are yes. interviewing right. uh, candidates. I think those are some great tips. That uh, great tips that uh, it's very uh, easy to implement in like company of any any size. Um, I want to talk more about uh, building an inclusive culture because we we both. Uh, both know that uh, bringing in more diverse talent does not help if you don't have a uh, culture where people from different kind of backgrounds can really thrive uh, and be themselves at, at work. Um, so what can startups do to build and scale more inclusive cultures? Yeah, yeah with booking, this has always been part of our DNA. And I think if you think about the Netherlands, it's a very mm. small country, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, we're booking where we started to grow. We had to cross borders very early on. And when you cross borders very early on, you, you know, you're, you're, you're straight going to deal with different culture, different backgrounds of people, mm. right? But also currency, there's all kinds of elements as to scaling into different countries. 
but uh, uh, it's very important also as a startup to, to really think about that. How, how am I going to scale, right? And there's lots of elements to think through your strategy as to how you're going to scale, but you also actively need to think, how am I scaling the culture? And how do I make sure that the culture is similar everywhere, right? So that's, that's another part of it. But if you think about building a workplace where everybody feels they belong, that's something you actively need to think about. And then I think leaders are so crucial. Mm. I've seen that booking as well, because I mean, even as a founder, you, 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 you can have a certain culture, right? But then if you bring in new leaders, you really need to think, are these the le leaders that are going to build the culture? that this company needs or that is, that is good for the business because uh, everybody can change the culture and the leaders will hire new people, right? So yep. it's super crucial to really think about that and, and really build that into your strategy. Mm, absolutely. Uh, and like you are very, uh, very right of, of like uh, when you are bringing in leaders yes. uh, and when you are in a certain scale. And I think at Booking.com, you've really seen the massive scale of a company yes. as well. Uh, you need to bring in the leaders uh, that uh, can, um, can uh, lead um, and uh, foster an inclusive uh, leadership style and inclusive cultures. Um, yeah. Do you have any like uh, very practical examples of like how do you find these people? So what what would you, for example, yeah. ask a leader or like a leader you're about to bring in? What would you ask them in in interviews or how would you find uh, that yeah, they fit me, that culture? I mean, if you think about it, for me, in interviews, uh, there's lots of things you can already see right mm. from resume. So. It's very important that you focus interviews on culture mm -hmm. and seeing if somebody really fits your culture, right? Because that's so super important because I think people mostly fail because of that, because you know if people are qualified, right? That's often not yeah. even so complicated. And you need to think three years ahead because I've always learned if you're in a scale up then you need to think three years ahead. Is this person actually capable today of, of being part of this business in three years when it scales. Mm -hmm. So these are elements that for me are, are always super important, but culture is number one. And yeah. the questions around culture to really test as well, right? How mm -hmm. have people solved problems, right? How are they working together with other people, etc. I mean, at Booking, you saw it's a culture where it's really a joint culture. So, you know, you need to understand are people also able to grow other talents, right? Because they yep. see that's how I build success. It's not when I'm successful, but it's that I actually <laughs> could develop others. Mm -hmm. So these type of elements in leaders are super crucial to be successful. And um, yeah, and I think what's also part, if you think about talent um, in the Netherlands, and that's uh, div diverse leaders in tech. It's a platform that Ingrid Tappen mm -hmm. has built under TechLeap. And uh, that is fantastic because she actually has now 200 leaders and uh, exceptional leaders. And I've learned with the benchmark that um, yeah, yeah, if you have the data, you need the leaders because yeah. the leaders can actually make the change. And you see that talent now is looking for these leaders that, that want to build these inclusive workplaces. So the leaders are quite in the center. So we're actually joining forces now because yeah. then you actually have the leaders the exceptional leaders that you can help with data. So we're actually helping them with data as to what to measure, how to measure, see where your company stands, what next step can you make. And then we help them with training, with the tools to do it. Because I think if you, if you get this flywheel right for companies, it gets much easier, I think, for them to make progress. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think that I'm really excited about that. Yeah, and, uh, that's growing. great. And I, I want to ask a little bit more about the, uh, about the organization, diverse, yeah. uh, diverse uh, leaders in, in uh, tech. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about uh, what is the mission and kind of how are you uh, supporting uh, diversity yeah. in tech? Yeah, so the mission really is to accelerate, right? DEI in companies, that's mm -hmm. really the mission. And, uh, and you see now, like I said, with this flywheel, you really have 
everything together. And many companies, I see that as well, and I speak to many companies, many CEOs, they say, yeah, I find it super important, but I really don't know where to start, and I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I think this can really help, because it gives companies a platform for their leaders to really be educated. It's, and I've learned as well with booking that even if you do everything as a company, you still need the ecosystem to help as well. So you somehow need to bring together this ecosystem. And there's lots of initiatives out there on DEI, yeah. but they're all small and focused on one single mm -hmm. thing or one uh, a single community, for instance. So it really needs that to come together. Mm -hmm. It's a topic that uh, requires the ecosystem and even conferences like this, right, to help. Yep. And uh, so, I, yeah, I'm super excited uh, about how this approach and how this can truly help. Yeah. Um, let's uh, still get back to uh, back to startup founders. Uh, they are the majority in the in the audience. Um, is there something that uh, you would recommend that uh, startup founders kind of start or build early on? Uh, let's say there's someone in the audience who's like, I like, I kind of, I really want to do this, but I don't know how. Where would you recommend that they they start? Yeah, so I, I always say with many things, and I had to do this many times in my career, it's really a step out of your comfort zone. Mm. I mean, you need to step out of your comfort zone to really connect to different types of communities, because I think that's quite important, I think, to do, specifically if you want to really build an inclusive culture, right? It starts with yourself. So uh, th that's always the biggest advice that I give uh, mm. to do, because that will really help also the understanding of a founder on how do I now need to do this? What type of people do I need? How do I find people that really contribute to my skills, my vision, give different perspectives, perspectives into the business which you need? So I think stepping out of your comfort zone uh, Mm. That's probably the thing to do. Yeah, uh, and I think kind of uh, during your uh, journey at Booking.com, uh, you've done a lot of things and you've uh, uh, you've uh, tried and tested and maybe failed in some things as well uh, when it comes to DEI. Um, so, do you have like what would you say that would be your biggest learning uh, from those years when it comes to comes yeah. to DEI? It's a very open mindset mm. and it, it's like I said it's really if you have this open mindset and you want to make this work and you really listen to people you will find out things that even myself I've learned I was not aware of right mm. because of my background it's like we had when we were growing our product teams we have people from Japan that are not used to speak up and then you have a Dutch culture that are always picking up so it's like but how do you make sure that these people get heard right mm. and how do you make sure that others understand that how do we stimulate to get the whole group to participate these type of things we had events where we have people in Saudi Arabia that women cannot travel by themselves right uh, to the to the Netherlands so then we said okay then we bring the man as well so you call constantly need to think, how do I make this work for everybody? Mm. And once you have an open mindset to doing that, it, it is super fascinating. You learn a lot, you push yourself as well. I think I became a better person because of that. But uh, yeah, I think that's super important. That and you must have seen as well, yeah. because in your job as well, mm. you probably need to step out of your comfort zone a lot. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I love what you said about the open mindset, yeah. uh, because I would also emphasize that that's the one of the most important things that you need to have uh, when you are uh, starting your DEI journey, because it is a journey and yes. you will not get everything right from the beginning. Uh, and there might be even... Uh, 
uh, like uh, uh, situation where you will fail, uh, but as long as you have that kind of open mindset or yeah. growth mindset to always committing, doing things better uh, and yes. learning, uh, I think that's the really useful mindset to have. Well, I mean, in business in general, yeah, no, <laughs> but absolutely. when it comes with to DAI. What I see happening with companies as well, that ownership often sits with HR or a DEI department in bigger companies. And I think, you know, it's, 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 everybody should take ownership Absolutely. of that in the company. Yeah. And, and that is something that really needs to change. I mean, and that's why the leaders are so important, because they're actually the ones that can make, make that change. Absolutely. I think that's something that I personally believe and we at Swapi believe a lot as well, uh, that DEI can't be something that no. would be kind of like outsourced <laughs> to someone, uh, but it needs, uh, it needs to be something that it's responsibility for everyone and especially all leaders yes. uh, in the organization to really uh, build that as a part of your culture uh, and not some nice to have you have Correct. on the side. So I really believe in that. Um, but I think we're running out of time. Uh, this was such a nice uh, chat. Thanks for finding the time to share your learnings, uh, Gillian. And uh, thank you, everyone thank you who came to listen. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for doing the interview. <laughs> okay.